Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to join us today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Lemiru on DTT because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon, leader for the movement of change, Alan Kojo Chairman, Tink Immense's tour of the Western region. We have details of that tour for you. But this afternoon, we'll tell you about a half-naked man on demonstration against Ghana's newly passed anti-gay bill. More on this shortly. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X-Spaces at Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please do stay for details. <laughs> Elders of the Tema Traditional Council have vowed not to rest until they get justice for the two who lost their lives on Friday during the Kulejo Festival. Youth spokesperson of the Tema Traditional Council, Henry Oninko, uh, but first is hinted they will petition the president and other stakeholders to ensure justice for the two. We can now listen to youth spokesperson of the Tema Traditional Council, Henry Oninko, who says they will not rest until they get justice for the two. The Tema Traditional Council, not necessarily a compensation, but I mean the affected families must also feel that the military has regretted what they did and they are they are they are, they are trying to calm them rather than issuing communique with threats. Yesterday, the communique they issued to be precise, at the latter part of the communique, they mentioned that anytime the youth try to come on board, they are going to respond in that accurate manner. On a more serious note, as a representative of the youth. We have met them severally. Even this morning, we have had another meeting with them. No youth in Tema will take the law into their whole hands as in attacking them, attacking them or kind of something. No, we are not going to do that. We are law-abiding citizens. And whatever happened that day, if we had wanted to retaliate, it would have been a different thing altogether. So, in fact, right this morning, we are going to petition the presidency. We are petitioning the um, interior minister. We are petitioning the defense ministry. And the Greater Accra Regional Minister designated yesterday, he was there throughout the day. The mayor of Tema being the MESEC chairman was also there. The member of parliament for the Tema East constituency was also there. And they are coming to consensus. They are building themselves up. And I know definitely they will find a lasting solution and justice to our bereaved um, brothers and the family. The coalition of CSOs in HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria is asking government to ensure the remaining containers of drugs at the harbor are cleared. Their request follows the clearing of 14 out of 182 containers of locked up pharmaceutical products by the Ghana Revenue Authority to the Ministry of Health. The drugs are needed in the fight against HIV, AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis. Listen to the leader of the coalition, NS Otsin, explaining how urgent it is for the containers to be cleared. It is very, very urgent. If we start with the malaria communities, for example, you know the rains are upon us now. The raining season is just starting. And around this time, we see increases in cases of malaria because of um, stagnant waters, even of mosquitoes and all of that. So this is the time normally distribute uh, bed to pregnant men and children under five. So urgently to prevent to come out. For us, our information is that starting from next week, we are likely to witness a very serious stock out the community. So we will get them into the health activities between now and of the month. For this, it is a thing. We are fast coming out uh, uh, medicine for two TV. So we really need to have this and, and take it seriously. On your election headquarters, leader of the movement of change for change, Alan Kojo Chairman Singh, has taken his campaign to the Western region. He's swearing some markets there to share his vision with the traders. In Athalia Kwanza, has more. <laughs> I would say, I'm on the station. 
Calls for a running female running mate for Dr. Baumia has in, uh, have intensified as identifiable groups at the KJTM market in the Ashanti region add their voice to that request. They say calls made earlier by their colleagues at the race course market are justified and that's why they are throwing their weight behind them. Nanaya Ojima has more. The identifiable groups at the KJT market were instrumental in campaigning for the NPP flag bearer during the party's presidential primary. To them, their interactions with their customers have revealed readiness of the electorate for a female running mate for the NPP. Though they refused to name their choice, they outlined some qualities of their preferred individual. We've done the religious part of it. We've done the tribal part of it. Now we, we should consider the gender part of it. A female from Ashanti region will be the best option for the party. That's why we are pleading with the executives of the club, our chiefs, our former president, the current president, Anadolan Kweku Fuadu. They should all come to a, a conclusion and, and choose a female from Ashanti region for us to be the running mate. <laughs> We want a female running mate from the Ashanti region. We want someone to champion the interests of women in the region. Women make and keep the home, so we need their input. If a woman partners Dr. Balnia, it will improve his chances. Meanwhile, some members of the NPP in the Ashanti region have joined calls for a female from the region to partner the vice president. Irene Osereko speaks for the group. It is our prayer and we are hoping that a woman should uh, be the running mate for the party. As mothers, a woman plays an important role in marriage and the nation as well. We are pleading the stakeholders for the president as well, and then Dr. Baumia to consider woman to be the running mate for the party. Well, God hates the sin but loves the sinner. That's the basis for a Ghanaian youth identified as Texas Kadir Moro, who is embarking on a half-naked one-man demonstration against Ghana's newly passed anti-gay bill. Under this newly passed legislation, there's a jail term clause for offenders, but Texas says such a law is high-handed. The human rights advocate is using a solo street protest to appeal to authorities to reverse the criminalization aspect of the law. Yes, we agree that homosexuality is a sin which God abhors to the highest apology. Equally so is fornication and adultery, which our society has embraced so much that men are happy to flaunt their side chicks and women their side bulls. In the noble Quran Surah 24, and I read, the woman and the man guilty of illegal sexual intercourse flog each of them with a hundred strips. Let not pity withhold you in, this, in their case, in a punishment prescribed by Allah, if you believe in Allah in the last day. This is for unmarried persons guilty of the above crime, but if married persons commit it, the punishment is to stone them to death. 
in Leviticus 20, verse, 20, uh, verse 10, the man that commits adultery with another man's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. In Deuteronomy 22, verse, 20, uh, verse 22, if a man be found lying with a woman married to a, to a husband, then both of them shall die. I ask, tomorrow, if an individual in Ghana wishes to criminalize sex before marriage or the acts of side chick and side boo, would the clergy and the entire nation support it like we are for LGBTQ plus bill? Let's be consistent, fair, and unbiased on the decisions we make as a society. Commercial drivers in the Ashanti region say they are earnestly awaiting official communication for new transport fares. The previous week saw confusion at lorry stations as some drivers applied a 20% fare increase, but the drivers shelved the decision after the GPRTU and the Road Transport Coordinating Council called on them to reverse the price adjustment. Some drivers in Kumasi say with the high cost of fuel, there should be no further delays in announcing new fares. America create any concern for the two just ever to buy 30 percent. And look around Mukano from Friday. Yes, any more increment in Amma. And we all must anchor and say, I would be able to be able to my Nasancho. The Concerned Drivers Association announced some new fares the other time, but nothing happened. We don't know if they will affect the new prices. We are eagerly waiting because times are hard. We are really suffering. There is always a banter between drivers and passengers when the new price is announced. If the government could reduce the cost of fuel, it would help. The fuel is now expensive and I'm unable to make enough profit. I had to buy 400 cities out of 600 cities I made and paid the car owner. As Antehino Tumfo said to the second, is requesting the Rotary International Club in Ghana to remain poised in charting a good course of foster environmental sustainability for the country. Tumfo prevailed on the group to complement efforts by the government in instituting social interventions aligned with the sustainable development goals to empower the youth and improve the lives of many. The first district conference of the Rotary International District 9104 brought together national leadership and members of the club from across the country. The event was to celebrate the achievements of the club in the preceding year and set out plans for the new year. Speaking at the event, the Asantehene, Otunfo said to the second, commended the club for their enormous efforts in feeling change in the country through the Sustainable Development Goals. He particularly highlighted the club's role in improving the educational, agricultural and other sectors of the country's economy. The is focused on providing sustainable water solutions and improving sanitation has transformed many lives. The link helps directly to access to clean water that significantly uplifting community well-being and reducing waterborne illness. In the field of education, Rotary's efforts to construct schools, award scholarships, and support literacy have opened the vast horizons of hope and opportunity for Ghanaian youth. This investment is pivotal, empowering our future leaders to dream and achieve on a grander scale. 
The Asante Hinea, however, charged the club to refocus their efforts to enhancing sanitation and committing to avenues for youth empowerment while calling for collaboration between the group, government and civil organizations. Focusing on youth leadership and entrepreneurship promises to unlock the immense potential of Ghana's vibrant youth, driving innovation and progress. Addressing health challenges beyond polio, including malaria, HIV, AIDS, and new emerging health concerns remains imperative. Forces continue therefore the essential in building robust healthcare systems accessible to all. Collaborative efforts are vital to surmounting our complex challenges. Both can magnify the impact by forging stronger bonds with government, the private sector, and civil society, achieving sustainable and impactful outcomes. District Governor of Rotary International District 9104, David Oseamankwa Jr., reaffirmed the club's commitment to improve the social and economic status of Ghanaians. Service above self. We are giving to humanity everything or as much as we can give in our little way. I said before that we are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. We provide a network of resources and we provide it to the community, assess their needs and we provide it to them. So we give micro loans to small groups and we, we track how they are doing and we support them. In addition, we give them all sorts of literacy skills. It's a form of economic empowerment to support them in the work that they do. The Rotary International District 9104 is working to inject more youth into its membership as it works to charter more clubs to the existing ones. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Quiku. Pay cocoa farmers well to reduce environmental pollution from the Galamse menace. Words of Nenetete Akwa. Uh, of Mania Krobo as he criticizes the government for neglecting the significant environmental pollution caused by illegal mining, popularly known as Galamse. He suggests that fair compensation for cocoa farmers would incentivize them to continue farming and thus decrease environmental degradation. His remarks were made at the inaugural Africa and Diaspora Development Initiatives on Environment and Climate Action in Pong in the eastern region. Carlos Caloni has more. Held under the theme Sustain Ecosystem Health, Pathway to a Green Future, the event organized by the African Millennium Heritage Foundation convened environmentalist, student, practitioners and traditional leaders to discuss Africa's response to climate change. Dr. Lloyd Manotti of University of Environment and Sustainable Development in his keynote address emphasized the agency of adopting eco-friendly practices to reduce pollution. Pollutants, again, such as pesticides, weedicides, fungicides, damage nutrients and, eco and microorganisms in the soil that must sustain it Dumping of toxic, non-degradable plastic wastes, absorbents, and acrylic materials pollute the soil. Soil pollution harms humans through the food chain once again. One may ask, can we protect and sustain the natural environment? The simple answer is, yes, we can if the fight for its sustenance is head-on. I must say it must be head-on. And the solutions to go. Sustainable agriculture. Sustainable agriculture. Yes, we must farm, but must do so sustainably by avoiding harmful practices and toxic substances that damage the natural environment. We must also practice organic farming and patronize organic products. Founder and director of the African Millennium Heritage Foundation, Evelyn Bochui, describes Ghana's current environmental pollution levels as alarming. She emphasizes the need for stringent policies to regulate chemical usage in the mining sector. As when you look at the petro petroleum sectors, you look at what is happening today in Galamsey. 
uh, for instance, is heartbreaking. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit Takrade and crossing the Pearl River, uh, I, I just cried. You know, the use of uh, mercury and all that is really polluting. The, our health system is not better. We need a better green future for our children. The specific uh, steps we are hoping the government to take is to bring out policies that will actually help strategize the use of chemicals or mercury in, uh, for instance, in the, the fight of Galamsin for our water bodies because all the fishes in the, in the, in the seas gets back into us and uh, it's killing us. So we're really hoping, especially for that sector, for them to work hard, bring policies that will, will, will strategize and streamline how um, mining actions, you know, can be better, can be done better in a, in a, in a green way. I think when it comes to this mining sector, I think we're not doing much. We can do better. Laws are already there, so they need to enforce the law. Nene Tete Akura the first, divisional chief of Manya Krobo, representing the corner of Manya Krobo traditional area, has said that the government lacks commitment to combat the Galamse manners. He advocates for fair compensation to cocoa farmers to deter them from selling their farms to illegal miners, thereby mitigating environmental destruction. The government is committed. I don't think so, because Galamse is spoiling everything Galamse. just look at our lands now when you go to some of the villages it's like because of money now things have been like degrading the the forest cutting down trees cocoa that is our backbone is now going if the cocoa board the government will pay the farmers well i think all these things will be done when you take good care of them, I don't think they will sell their lands. Participants also highlighted the impact of climate change and urged authorities to take proactive measures. For Joy News, Carlos Caloni, Bong, in the Eastern Region. Good afternoon, welcome to the business segment on Joy News today with me, Pius Kojo Baka. The Ghana Enterprises Agency says it is on course with the agenda to support employment of more than 250,000 entrepreneurs across the country under its Big Box initiative with support from the MasterCard Foundation. The initiative, which aims to empower entrepreneurs economically, has been touted as one of the flagship job creation programs by the agency. Speaking at a ceremony to exhibit some projects delivered under initiative, Chief Executive of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, Kosi Yanki Aye, assured that all regions will be covered before the program comes to an end. Here is more in this following report. The Business Box Initiative was opened by the Ghana Enterprises Agency as another avenue to empower entrepreneurs to create more jobs for the youth. According to Chief Executive Kosi Yanke Aye, the agency is on course to ensure that more than 250,000 youth benefit from the initiative with support from the MasterCard Foundation. She was speaking at the project exhibition in Accra. So happy to see you. I already did a quick survey of what they have and I'm very impressed with the work that we are doing here and I know that um, this is a great opportunity for us all and would also want to hear from you. Um, I, as I mentioned, I'm not going to say much. The new project Business in a Box is very exciting for us. We're looking at supporting over 250,000 people across the length and breadth of this great nation, Ghana. We know we can do it. I know Godfred is looking at me and saying, I want more. Oliver Twist. But <laughs> we are pushing and we will make it happen and ensure that this is a great success. Rita, thank you so much for taking time of your busy schedule to be with us. Some of the beneficiary entrepreneurs have been sharing their success stories with Joy Business. I'm a proud beneficiary. The access to funds has really helped me in that prior to uh, receiving the funds, I was operating in the dark. 
in the form of a cottage business. But through the funds, I've been able to scale up my business. My business now has visibility. We have an office space where we operate from and all that. Our customer base has also increased. We produce and sell household chemicals as well as organic based cosmetics. Some funds grant from them which I added up to buy my industrial leather machine and then I've been able to secure a land, a piece of land. Yeah, so aside that I have I had trainings from them and it's really helping my, my business in terms of keeping records, how to price your products, how to make profit. It's, it's a lot. Sometimes you just learn them and you think you may not need it, but later you will need it. I had this passion long ago, since I was small. I had the passion of cooking and baking as well. So I was doing the cooking when I heard of the program, the GEA program. And the most interesting part of all is that when I heard of the NVTI, because I've been yearning to write the NVTI. So I just joined, registered, and enrolled for six months. And with my, after the six months training, I brought out the career that was in me, it was, it was hidden. The initiative is open to all at the various district business advisory offices of the Ghana Enterprises Agency. Interest rates remained relatively same for the first time since the beginning of the year. However, the government's treasury bill sales were oversubscribed by 22.25% after two weeks of um, oversubscription. There is more in this report. Following a rise in inflation in March, there were concerns that the falling interest rates were hot. This reflected in the 91-day bill as the yield stayed same at 25.73%. That of the 182-day bill went down by 8 basis points to 28.14%. However, the interest on the 364-day bill shot up to 28.74% from the previous 28.33%. Going forward, it's unclear whether interest rates will resume at falling spree. Meanwhile, the government got 4.228 billion cities from the sale of the short-term instruments. This is compared with a target of 2.459 billion cities. About 85.2% of the bids tendered came from the 91-day bill. All the bids of the 3.606 billion cities were accepted. For the 182-day bill, 505.19 million cities were received and the uptake was same. The one-year bill also saw about 117.64 billion cities tended. The uptake was also 117.64 million cities. And that's it for business. We've got more for you at 1 p.m. on the marketplace. Pause is next. Let's bring you sports now on the Joy News today. I am Muftar Nabila Abla, President of Ghana Athletics. Bar Fuseni has revealed that the country will be bidding to host the 2026 Senior Africa Athletics Championship. This follows the construction of a uh, um, certified athletic track for the African Games 2023. He says with this infrastructure, the country is now ready to host the rest of the continent. I don't have enough way to describe the importance of these tracks for Ghana athletes and Ghana athletes. Um, it is one in its kind in Africa. It only Botswana and Kenya has this. They, even Morocco doesn't have this one. So that shows how important it is. My prayer is that we should be able to keep it for the foreseeable future. We should be able to keep it good in two, three years' time that we can't request to host African Championship. That is our next big thing that we want to do. We will request for African Championship in the next two, three years, and we will continue to do the Grand Prix that will start, will start next year. And we'll also request to have high performance center with this facility. What we need is to get a coach, a resident coach, to come and stay in Ghana here. The facilities are good, the electronic equipment are good. What else do we need?
For the first time in 120 years, Bayer Leverkusen are champions of the Bundesliga and they've done so with five matches to spare. Um, this victory uh, was chalked on Sunday when they defeated Werder Bremen by five goals to one. 15 points more to go for and they are already champions of the Bundesliga. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Showbiz Segments with me, Jacqueline and Samar Yabwa. Now, dance isn't just about grooving to the beat. It's a rhythm that resonates through the entire music industry. Former Ghana dance champion Ajit Esoa recently revealed this truth while speaking at the grand opening of the Afrostar Kids Academy in Ghana. And he's not just toothing his horn. He's genuinely believing that Ghana's dance scene outshines the rest of Africa. <laughs> Ajit Esoa is Ghana's best-known dancer, winning the World Dance Championship in 1986. He thrilled many, both in Ghana and abroad. For more than three decades on, he's been sharing thoughts on the industry's evolution, looking back at those humble stage shows to the role of social media in today's dance and music industry. What time is just dancing competition? Wow. Yeah. But now, I mean, dancing competition was over. I mean, everywhere. Dance, I mean, dancing competition was even greater than, uh, what do you call it, music, was, you know, back in the days. But I can say now, too, it's very great because when you go on TikTok, all the music that is coming out, these guys have to create, like, Afronitas and the dance god Lloyd, and they create dances for the music to grow big and stuff like that. Grow His reflection made at the launch of a new school, Afro Star Kids Academy, was carefully crafted to inspire the young ones to consider dance as a career. Boogie on stage, I saw you dancing. Can you show me some of the moves? Hey, 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 hey. Who, who taught you how to dance? I learned it myself. Okay, but are you enrolling in Afronitas um, Dance Academy? Yes. How do you feel about that? Excited, amazing. I'm very excited because she has always wanted this. Okay. So I'm here, I'm happy, I'm happy. I could make her dreams come true by registering her. Okay. She she already knows how to dance. Yes. What did she learn how to dance? Or you you're a dancer too? I'm not a dancer. I don't know. She just loves watching TikTok and then she learns. That's all. Um, eleven. Eleven. What about you? How old are you? I'm eight. Eight. And um, your father tells me you're called. Two fingers. Hey, daddy, where from that name? <laughs> Two fingers. I think one of my classmates in the secondary school. A very good student so as a good student i want that impact from him to be on my kids so true down that is why i give them that name two fingers how excited are you to be part of afro star kids academy because she likes dancing and she is very good in dancing that's why we join her the school was founded by popular international dancer afronita also known as danita akosia yeboa at the age of 20. my dream come true and I, I know that many kids love me here in Ghana and across the globe and they love to dance and they don't have the right place to go to and I just had to put it upon myself to create a dance school for them to nurture that talent, to bring it up, make them professionals in the game and then we take it up from there. The unveiling saw many from the music industry throwing support for the initiative to catch them young. Mr. Drew, the case hit maker, and Mufti. Charlie, I know, are you a dancer? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm learning from my, from my godfather. You know. I'm learning, I'm not learning. But after the show, you're going to give me some moves. No problem. I don't want to. But how do you feel being here, though? I mean, so amazing and feel like we are here to support. As an artist, I feel like when I compose a song and dance comes inside, it pushes the song to a certain limit that, I mean, I don't even expect. So dance is actually, it's, it's part of the roots when it comes to music promotion. It feels great. Um, I feel, I feel like it's, it's, it's a special moment, a very special moment for the dance community. It's a wrap for the show, the segments with me, Jacqueline and Suma Yabwa. But Jacqueline, did you spot any of the DWP Academy um, dancers? Uh, no, Demzy. so it was only Rolly who came. Um, who I was came? expecting to see some of them, but none came. 
Oh, Holy Roly. <laughs> wow, wow, that's interesting. Anyway, yeah. we wish her all the best. <laughs> Afronita, I quite enjoy her dance. That's it for the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Aisha Prime. Look, log on to myjournaline.com for more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. So it's about time that.